Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick overview on what string is. So string will show you um, the protein-protein interactions in certain networks. So it'll show you actual protein-protein interactions and predicted protein-protein interactions. So if we go to about... So string gets its information from five main sources. Genomic context predictions, high throughput lab experiments, co-expression, automated text mining, and previous knowledge in other databases. And they'll pull all this. This is going to be everything that's online. So they're going to pull all of these information from all these different resources online and then combine it to make one network of protein-protein interactions. So the string database currently covers over 9 million proteins from over 2,000 organisms. So I'm going to go here to search. In our class, we modeled SLC6A1. Okay, and you can see I've already searched for it. So that you just type in the protein name and you can look at specific organisms or you can auto detect. So if you click this drop down, you'll see all the organisms you can uh, search for. So this is going to be, like I said, over 2,000 organisms. I'm going to auto detect just so you can see um, just how many, how much information it can pull from even the most obscure organism. So this is all of the organisms that have SLC6A1 protein that can be expressed in their genome. So we specifically want to look at Homo sapiens. So you click that box. You can click all one box at a time. So Homo sapiens and then continue. Okay, and this is the protein-protein interaction network. So this is technically called the first shell. And under default settings, the first shell is the first 10 proteins that interact with your search protein that have the highest order of confidence. So a high order of confidence is a score of 0.7 or above. 0.9 is the highest confidence. So this is the first 10 proteins that interact with SLC6A1. And you can see that none of them have a order of confidence above 0.77. And actually, in the default settings, uh, it's accepting nothing below a 0.4. So this is pretty good. This is almost positively how SLC6A1 will interact in the human genome. So if you look at all these proteins, um, there is either a picture inside or not. So if they're, if they're called nodes. So if the node is empty, there is no known 3D structure of protein. So it hasn't been structured at all. And then if it's a filled node, like this right here, you'll see this little 3D structure. So they'll tell you what this protein does, and then they'll tell you where they get the information from here. And you can actually click on this 3D model. And it'll send you to Swiss model. So this is the actual, um, how it affects the genome. And, it, and I think, yeah, so it's basically just like a genome map. And then this is going to be the 3D structure. So right now I'm under the line view. So let's go cartoon. And you can play around with this. You can click on specific sections. And then it will zoom in. You can do stuff like that for each of these nodes that have pictures inside them. So the colors just indicate a different type of protein. The lines, so the color of the lines, you have known interactions, predicted interactions, or others that come from text mining, co-expression, or protein homology. So like this has different types of greens um, and it's got a blue. So there's one known um, and there's a black. So, and there are actually two others that are predicted. Okay, and then the red color means that that is the first, that is the query protein in the first shell of interactions. So the query protein is going to be what you're actually trying to look for. Okay, and so from here, you can export this um, as just a straight up image. You can export it as a vector graphic, which means that you can um, edit this. You can scroll over your proteins in it as well. So if you're given some sort of online presentation, this would be a really cool thing to add to your presentation. Okay, and then um, so right now we're under Network Viewer. You can look at all these different things. So experiments are going to show all of the um, published experiments that people have done with SLC6A1. Databases, this is known metabolic pathways, protein complexes, signal transaction pathways from curated databases. So this is, um, so like your Swiss model, it's going to come 
like from GWAS, other other uh, genome databases that have contributed to how they model this protein. Text mining, so this is from uh, published resources. And then neighborhood, so this is groups of genes that are frequently observed in each other's genomic neighborhood. So if you click on neighborhood, it will show you a comparison of organisms that have the same frequency of genes that are affected by SLC6A1. Co-occurrence, so this is going to be, like I said, the, the first shell, so the first 10 proteins, and this is the level of confidence they have on them interacting with each other. So this might actually take a little while to load. So we're going to go back and then go to co-expression, which is um, a very similar concept. So it'll show you in Homo sapiens and in other organisms. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that SLC, SLC6A1 almost positively interacts with all of the 10 proteins. So the GABRR3, I think, is more of a predicted interaction. So the level of confidence isn't as high as the other ones. But you can also see how GATS, GATS, interacts with each of these proteins. And it's almost the same exact way in other organisms. Let me try to go back to co-occurrence. Okay, so this compares organisms with this that to Homo sapiens. So let's see, Homo sapiens, the eukaryota, that's our baseline. And that will be compared to other organisms. And it'll tell you in this, the protein, the 10 proteins in that first shell, how they interact in other organisms as well. So some of the organisms don't have that protein affected or maybe not have it in their systems at all. So that's really cool. But we're going to go back to the network. And you can change some things around. So um, analysis, you can look at these are the different pathways. So if I click on the GABA-A receptor complex, these are all the proteins that are uh, involved in the GABA-A receptor complex. You can click on multiple. multiple. So that's GABA-A receptor activity. So it'll show you the color that indicates to the right is will show up in the certain proteins that interact with that pathway. Okay, so you can change some things around. So you can change the lines by evidence, confidence, or molecular action. Um, confidence just shows you if the line is darker or thicker, it's more level of confidence that that protein interacts with a different protein. Then molecular action, the line shape indicates predicted mode of action. So this is the all the resources that it, it is modeling this protein after. And like I said, this is um, you can change this. So this is default. So the first shell contains no more than 10 in interactors, but you can change that to 20, 50 custom value. And then the second shell, you can change that as well. So potentially you could have the first shell with 50 and the second shell with 5. Okay, and then... Display simplifications, um, you can disable structure previews inside network bubbles, so they're all empty. Um, I prefer the 3D views just because it makes a pretty picture. Okay, and then the clusters, you can do, you can cluster by no clustering, k-means, or MCL. So I'll just update it for k-means with uh, no more than three clusters. Okay, so here's the first cluster, second, and third, and that means the um, the first the first three with the highest order of confidence. So let's do ten since we have ten proteins. Okay, and then we'll go back to no clustering because that's just it looks better to me. It makes a prettier picture. Okay, and that's basically it. You can play around with it. This way, you can pull all of these out, um, model it how you want, and then you can download it and present it to a bunch of scientists and they can be impressed.